Greetings everyone, Zed here. Today I'm going to bring you a very exciting run. This was actually kind of the most fun I've had in Genshin in a long time. Anyone who watches my channel knows I am a whale. So a lot of the times, you know, I have fun building these really powerful characters with tons of constellations, R5 weapons, putting together these crazy team comps that just destroy everything in sight. And while I do have a lot of fun with that, this actually brought me a lot of joy in a different way. Today I'm bringing you a run of the Imaginarium Theater. This is an all four star run. No five star heroes, no five star weapons. So every single hero and weapon that we're using during this run is four star. And the reason this brought me so much joy is because it was challenging. It was actually very difficult. Uh, I had to do this run at least 10 times to finally get all the heroes built in the right way, figuring out which heroes to bring and what combinations they worked out. Um, it was actually very, very difficult. And the challenge brought me a ton of joy. Um, it's for this reason I kind of wish there was actually whale content in the game where some of my higher five-star characters actually had some purpose where they had challenging modes to play in that were actually that are actually difficult but that's not in the game but that's okay this 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 run this was actually a blast now i already recorded this run like i said it took me a lot of tries but once i finally finished i'm like hey i did it we we made it happen so this is a recorded run and I'm just gonna basically commentate over it. We're just gonna watch it start to finish, unedited. Um, I'm not gonna tamper with it or cut it up into pieces. I'm just gonna watch it from start to finish. It's about 20 to 25 minutes from start to finish. So bear with me on that. I don't dawdle too much, but I really just don't want to cut the run up into pieces. I want it to just be a full run, showcasing everything I did, every choice I made, and not having it be like cut up into pieces. Now the other thing I want to mention is I did not use any boons and I did not use any caches either. So that was also part of the challenge. Uh, I was trying to make it kind of like, can this be done with four star heroes and weapons and not, you know, rely on RNG as far as buffs go and what kind of caches I would get. I just wanted to really do like a stripped down simplistic run and see if I could get through it. So guys, enjoy. This is the full run from start to finish. Like I said, I'm just going to commentate over the run, kind of explain my choices. Enjoy. All right, now this is our actual run from start to finish. We have an all four star hero, all four star weapon run, not a five star in sight. You can see at the beginning of the video, I kind of showcased the cast that we're bringing. This is uh, 15 four star heroes that we're bringing. And we did not use any supporting cast characters from other people's accounts. All of these characters used are my account. And you can see the first thing we did was we picked a hero. We needed a DPS, basically. The first act, you really, really need a DPS. So we picked Hazo. Hazo, really great here, because your only choices for four stars are Farazhan, Toma, and Kuki. So you don't have any DPS there. And Farazhan obviously goes really great with Hazo. Toma also synergizing really great with Hazo here. There's a lot of good raw damage. Hazo is probably, for as far as DPSs go in this run, probably one of my higher tier DPSs. Very, very strong. So using him at the beginning of the run is not great because you really want to have your stronger DPS heroes at that later half of the run when the enemies are tougher, but you kind of have to work with what you're given. So we went with Hazo here. Now you'll notice Wanderer is on the team as well. You do have to bring a 5-star hero in the first two acts. So for Act 1 and Act 2, you do have to bring a 5-star hero. There's no way around that. Uh, since we're doing a cashless and a boonless run, you can't use caches to restore vigor. And the amount of 4-star heroes you have, which is 15 total, only gives you 30 points of vigor on your 4-star heroes throughout the run. And because there's 8 floors and you need 4 vigor per floor, you actually need 32 vigor to complete the run. So that leaves two vigor that has to be given to five stars, and we use them early on in Act 1 and Act 2. Now we uh, basically pick a hero every chance we get. So we're going into Act 2 here. We're able to pick a hero. My train of thought here, again, was you want to use your weaker characters at the beginning. 
So I spent a little bit of time here thinking about which hero I want to bring. And I think we settle on, yeah, Yanfei. Yanfei is one of my weaker DPS units in this run. So getting through her usages early, using her Vigor early, is great for us. Because we're not going to want to use her at the end of the run. She's really just not strong enough to carry the later end of the run. So we're going to immediately use her now that we've picked her up. And we have to bring our Lakino here as well, like I said. In Act 2, you have to bring a 5-star. There's no way around that. So we go with Yanfei, Kuki, and Toma here. It's kind of like an overload Yanfei. Without Chevy, of course. So not as crazy powerful as it could be if we had Chevy here instead of Arlecchino. But you have to make do with what you have. Toma luckily synergizes with Yanfei pretty okay. You don't really need the extra pyro app from Toma, though, because you're not doing... You know, Yanfei's attacks are already pyro, obviously, since she's a pyro catalyst, so it's really just kind of fine. It is a C6 Toma, so that does help with some of his constellations in increasing her damage, but... Luckily, these enemies aren't too difficult, so it's a good a good way to get rid of our Yanfei usages, just powering through these four enemies. One thing to note is a lot of these four-star heroes, I do not use them very frequently, especially the DPS characters, because we have so many great, as a whale, I have so many great five-star heroes. It's very infrequently that I actually use four-star heroes, so we had to spend a lot of time actually learning how a lot of these four-star heroes actually work not as much the supports but definitely the dps's a lot of the four star supports we do end up using pretty frequently so just those four star dps's uh yanfei included we really don't play yanfei very much outside of this mode so all right so we're going into act three we picked up sethos there um, we basically use all of our currency in this mode to just take as many companions as we possibly can. Every time we're offered a companion, we take it. The more companions we have early on, the easier it is to get rid of your weaker characters earlier and leave your stronger characters for later. And then just ensuring that you have enough synergy um, with the teams that you build to get through what you need to build. So. Act 3 is always the Dendro Chicken here, so we bring a lot of Electro to defeat the Dendro Chicken. Just applying a lot of Dendro to him is a good way to get him to get knocked out like this, so you can just attack him without worrying about him running around the stage like an absolute moron. <laughs> it is frustrating very much to deal with this guy. The first thing noticeable here that's interesting is we actually have two DPS characters. We have Sethos and Hazo, which actually is not the worst thing in the world. Hazo's skill cooldown is actually pretty long. If you don't have the supports for it, it you know, bringing him by himself can actually be a little rough sometimes just because his skill takes so long to go on cooldown. So what I ended up finding was you have two DPS heroes that are on the same team. A lot of time what you can do is just, you know, like with Hazo, we would just burst and skill with him in a very short timing window, get a ton of damage out with him, and then switch off of him and let Setho shine for a while. And that actually ended up working pretty decently. Um, it's obviously not optimal, but, you know, you do what you, you got to do to get through the levels, having two DPS on the same team. Uh, we picked up Chevy there, which is great. And then notice here, we did not get a companion select as an option. So we used one of our re free refreshes. You get two free refreshes uh, on every run. Victory. So we did that to make sure we could pick up a couple companions here. Especially since we had over 160 of the currency. I want to help. Refreshing there was really vital because we were able to pick up two two companions to bring with us. And you'll notice we just picked up Sucrose, who's going to be really good for this next floor because it's a, one of the tower defense floors. And Sucrose is actually kind of goaded here. So you notice we like instantly select her because we're kind of like, we know we're going to want to bring Sucrose for sure. Here again, we have two DPSs with Sethos and Yanfei. 
Now, this fight, if I remember, is pretty messy. Um, I do not play this as well as I probably could have. I'm honestly kind of surprised we beat this first try because... There's definitely an optimal way to play this team to use it to great effect. Obviously, you want to swirl the element of the DPS that you're about to use before you use them. So, for instance, if we want to use Sethos to do a bunch of damage, we probably want to use Kudrosara first, then swirl her Electro, and then use Sethos afterwards to really take advantage of the Viridescent uh, buff. Or I should say, Vera doesn't debuff on the enemies before switching to Sethos. We don't do that to great effect here. You're gonna find a lot of times I do Sucrose's burst and we end up like... Like here, look, we've got Electro swirling with Sucrose's burst, which is great, but then we're using... Yanfei on, on pyro attacks and we're completely negating the usefulness of that, so... Kind of cringe there. Um, there's definitely some optimization that could have been done here to make this go smoother, but we we make it through okay. You have to keep in mind with a lot of these teams, them all being four stars, you know, I don't use a lot of these characters very often, so especially in these combinations. So a lot of my meta teams, like I've kind of got the rotations down to a fine art on how to utilize them, but some of these, these teams are so scuffed, man, you just kind of... You kind of just have to do what you have to do, and sometimes you're going to make a lot of mistakes, not really being familiar with how all the cooldowns work and how quickly their bursts are going to come back. Sometimes it's just, it's an absolute free-for-all. And uh, luckily we did not have to repeat that fight. We actually made it through okay. All right, so this next fight we're trying to figure out what's the easiest team to beat. This is Act 5. And we pick the the robots here. Uh, the mechanical array robots. And we don't have a lot of great options here. You know, I have Gaming and Bennett here, but we want to save Gaming and Bennett for floors uh, for Act 6 and Act 8. So we know we can't use Gaming and Bennett here. We really have to save the two of them for some of the tougher boss fights later in the run. So we're kind of forced to either use like an overload Chevy team here, which doesn't really have a solid DPS, or trying to mix in Sucrose or Lynette as some kind of like swirl, you know, mishmash pyro electro team. And we kind of optimize for the Chevy route here, kind of heavily leaning into the overload mechanic here. The main problem with this team being that our only pyro application is Chevy, and Chevy is not a good off-field pyro applicator. Um, she really can only apply pyro one time with both her skill and her burst, so not really that great here. We're actually going to... I know I lose this fight a couple of times, so I think what we're going to do here is fast forward through this fight, just to make this a little less painful to watch. And then we'll we'll catch back up when we actually get to the fight where I actually win. Uh, so let's uh, let's fast forward through this real quick. All right, and we're back. Um, so you can see I failed that run a couple times, and I was kind of debating whether or not I could actually get it done with these four. Again, the pyro application is just so weak here with Chevy not being able to apply any pyro off field. Um, so we're not really taking advantage of that overload as much as we should be. But we got really close on that second run. We basically, you know, we need to kill nine enemies here before the timer runs out. And we got to like eight and a half on that last run. So I, I kind of knew if I if I played a little bit more optimally and really paid attention to uh, the rotation order and skill cooldowns and making sure that, you know, I'm applying the elements that I need to apply uh, when I need to apply them. Then I knew I could get through it. And a lot of it's really relying on Fischl, because Fischl's doing a bulk of the damage here. My Fischl's on four-piece golden troop with some pretty good gear. So 
I knew my Fischl was doing a really large amount of damage, and so I was trying to make sure to use, like, Kujosaro's buff and burst, like, her skill and her burst, and then and switching to Fischl to try to take advantage of it as much as I could. And, um, you can see I do that here to greater effect. I'm really trying to take advantage of that. Uh, we also have Chevy on four-piece uh, Ocean Ute Clam, so... Making sure that those healing ticks from the bubbles popping are doing a decent amount of damage, like, kind of goes a long way, too. I mean, it's not, like, a crazy amount of damage, but it is a good amount of passive damage that we're doing as well. You can see the bubble is constantly there, popping. It's not doing a ton of damage. I think I saw, like, a 10,000 10, damage tick there um, a little while ago from it. But, yeah, there's another one there, so... Drop your weapons! Glory to the Shogun! So yeah, you can see we actually beat the nine enemies. So now we're just showing off. We actually killed the 10th enemy before the timer ran out. So definitely completely doable. Even with a very, very scuffed team, we got through it. It's really nice to get rid of Dory because Dory's not really doing that much. Uh, getting rid of Kujo Sara, one of the weaker heroes on the on the whole roster as well. There's not really any great... Sethos is kind of good to buff with her, but aside from that... She's not really able to help that much. All right, now we pick up Shang Ling. Shang Ling definitely going to help us in the last three floors. Shang Ling's definitely one of my better built four stars as well, especially for uh, Pyro support. As you all know, she's <laughs> probably should be a five star on her own, but she uh, is a four star somehow. All right, I think with Lynette the Lynette pick up there. I think we have our full roster on our team now. I think that was the last hero we actually need to pick up. When you're not doing any boons, you actually end up getting all of your heroes pretty darn quickly. And floor six is going to be the uh, the Bishops. So this is actually a pretty difficult fight. Gaming is my best built four-star DPS hero, so I knew for sure I wanted to bring Gaming here. I would have ideally liked to bring Gaming, Bennett, and Zhang Ling, because I know the three of them, especially with an Animo with VV Shred, would absolutely destroy, but we kind of had to be smart here. One of the issues we had is Fischl's literally our last Electro Hero, right? So if we're going to have any chance of doing any overload synergy with Chevy, we knew we needed to bring Chevy and Fischl together. They absolutely have to be paired together. And I kind of knew this in the back of my mind. Um, at this point, there was no hope of it. you know. So I was toying with some of the team compositions here. You can see I'm kind of mulling it over a lot. Like, what should I bring? What should I bring? And, and part of me knew, like, I'm going to have to bring Chevy and Fischl together if I want to take, take advantage of that overload mechanic. Because literally, Fischl's our last Electro Hero in the entire run. And Chevy and Fischl both have one Vigor left, so if they're going to be used together, if we're going to do anything with Overload, this is the only way to do it. So I settled on this team with Fischl and three Pyros, and we have Gaming. We actually scrapped Bennett, which was a tough call, because it's like, man, I think I'm going to need Bennett to beat these guys to get that damage that we need to actually finish both of these guys off. But we decided to not bring Bennett, to bring Zheng Ling. Uh, Zhang Ling also doing a ton of damage as well with Pyronado, obviously, and with the overloads, and Fischl being such a great Electro applicator. Uh, this team actually ended up working out pretty darn well. And like I said, Gumming is one of my better built heroes, so you, know, you can see Gumming doing 40 to 50 Ks on his jumps. Um, this is actually the first time I have played Gumming without Zhang Yun, because usually when I play Gumming, I. I bring Shan Yoon, but we don't have that luxury this time. And Gaming goes down with the ship on that last attack there. Luckily, you don't actually permanently lose the heroes when they die, which is great because uh, losing Gaming there would not have been acceptable. Luckily, we still get to use him again despite his death. Uh, but yeah, that team worked out really good. You you got to make sure, you know, obviously a tip when you fight those two, you got to make sure you kill them both at the same time which we managed to do there to great success. So, All right, so now we're looking at what we have left. We, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six heroes left. 
uh, with eight vigor split amongst them, which makes perfect sense. There's only two acts left, seven and eight. You need eight vigor total. Very important. When you only have eight vigor left split amongst all of your heroes for two floors, you got to make sure on floor seven, you're bringing every hero that has two vigor left without question. So you can see there I pick Lynette and Bennett because there's no question I cannot not bring them. If I don't bring Lynette and Bennett, uh, we won't have enough four star heroes in the next round. So that's very, very important. We would we would literally not have four heroes for the final eighth floor if we did not do that. So it's very important. And then of course I decide, oh, I need Gaming, I need Zhengling for floor eight uh, against Capellius. There's no real choice there. Uh, they're kind of my strongest duo here. And Capellius needs a lot of pyro application to get through those shields. So I knew I was gonna need Zhengling for sure. So this is the team we settled on for floor seven. Now, Lynette here is built as a DPS unit, so this is actually really, really useful here. Lynette is C6 as well, so after she uses her skill, she gets uh, some Animo Infusion for a while, which is actually fantastic, and we pretty much cleaned up that floor very easily. A lot easier than I thought we were going to. Lynette built pretty darn well there, and again, she's C6, so she has her DPS capabilities. And that leads us to our final floor, uh, the Capellius. Now, the interesting thing here, too, is obviously we have the four heroes we have are the four heroes we have. So we don't really get to pick who we bring on this final floor. We just have to bring the four heroes that we have. Um, Capellius has cryo shielding, so having three pyro units is fantastic. One thing, too, is Lynette is also Usi aligned, so... She also has the capabilities of breaking Capellius' shield as well, although I don't think we really use that in this fight. We don't need it, because we have so much Pyro app. We actually get through it pretty darn easily. Yeah, you can see um, the bonus is actually using Usio aligned attacks to break the shield, and I don't, I don't think we do it, so... It's funny that the end even has a bonus. Like, why even why even have a bonus on the final stage? I don't know. You're not going to be using the extra currency for anything. So it's kind of strange, but I guess it's just to add some extra flavor to the final fight. If you want to see if you can, if you can get the bonus. Uh, but you can see we pretty much handily get through this. I mean, having Gaming, having all the pyro application for Zheng Ling... Uh, and of course, having Bennett's buff and then having some animo to swirl it all together makes a huge difference here. And we basically we basically crush the final floor with no contestion. So, yeah, that's it. That's the run. We did take a few attempts to get through this. I mean, this was probably like the 10th attempt I had made. I don't know exactly how many attempts I had made, but... Um, it took me a it took me a lot of tries to get through it, and it was honestly pretty fun trying to figure out how to use all the heroes to the best of their abilities um, was very intriguing for me. Trying to find the right mix of DPS units versus support units, and how to fit all those pieces together to really make a viable run that we could actually get through. Make for a really, really, really interesting challenge. I do plan on doing this again for every single Imaginarium theater that comes out, as long as it stays interesting and relevant. Um, I'll probably keep doing this. I don't know what elements we're going to get next time. I'm assuming we're going to get some mixture of the four elements that we didn't get this time. Um, obviously, there's Dendro, Cryo, Geo, and... What's the last one? Uh, Dendro, Cryo, Geo, and what am I missing? I have no idea what I'm missing. Why can't I think of the seventh element? It's completely... Uh, it's Hydro. It's Hydro. Okay. Uh, yeah, some mixture of three of those four we should see in the next one. So we'll, we'll definitely try to make that happen again. Uh, you can see we got eight stars, which was the goal. We wanted to make sure we get all eight stars. 
Uh, eight stars with no caches, no boons. So keep that in mind. Uh, very interesting. I'm glad we could make that happen. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the run. Like I said, I will do this again in the future on the next Imaginarium Theater. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys next time.